Hello, I'm Bruce Sands from Mount Sinai in New York, and I'm going to answer what clinicians need to know before they start their patient on ozanamod for the first time. Well, there are a few things that you need to be aware of when you're using ozanamod. First of all, the drug has cardiac conduction effects uh, early on in the use of the medication. This is mitigated by the fact that there's a dose pack that gradually increases the dose amount over the course of a week, and this achieves tachyphylaxis. So you really shouldn't see any conduction abnormalities. You shouldn't see any symptomatic bradycardia. However, if the patient already has bradycardia at baseline, this is probably not a good drug for them. Or if they have serious conduction abnormalities, you shouldn't be using this drug in the first place. Also, you wouldn't want to be using the medication in someone who has just had a stroke in the last six months, or has had an MI in the last six months, or who has unstable angina. All these are relatively strong contraindications. You should check a baseline cardiogram to make sure that everything is okay. And I would also think about what other medications the patient is taking that might be affecting cardiac conduction. Secondly, you should check a full blood count, a complete blood count, before you start the patient on ozanamod, and that should include a lymphocyte count. The reason being that uniformly, we expect patients to have a 50% decrease or more in their absolute lymphocyte count uh, while they're on treatment for ozanamod. And while this is not problematic in terms of infection risk, there are occasionally patients who have baseline low lymphocyte counts who may not be indicated for this medication. I would recommend as well that you monitor the CBC and differential perhaps every three months or so. Another thing that you should check at baseline in every three months would be liver, liver function tests, liver enzymes. And that's because approximately uh, up to 5% of patients may have elevation of LFTs in the course of therapy. But uh, there were not cases of patients going into liver failure but I would follow that nevertheless. Another thing that you should consider checking for some patients would be a slit lamp exam or fundoscopy uh, for patients who may be at risk for macular edema, uh, which is a rare risk of this medication. So a patient who has diabetes, who has a history of uveitis, or a history of macular edema, those patients should be referred to an ophthalmologist to get a fundoscopic exam. Next thing is the patient may be at risk for herpes zoster, so it's a good practice to make sure that the patient has been vaccinated for herpes zoster. It's a good practice as well to check a patient for latent tuberculosis um, before you begin therapy and treat the patient if they do have latent TB. It's also important that you know that there are a number of drug-drug interactions between ozanamod and other medications, most importantly the MAO inhibitors. If you have any questions about this, it's always best to consult with your pharmacist or with your prescription system to see if there are any interactions. And then finally, you should know that this drug, um, very little is known about it with regards to safety in pregnancy. And so this would not be the best choice for a woman who intends to become pregnant while on therapy. And in fact, you need to wash out the medication for three months before the woman attempts to conceive. I think those are the things that I think about before someone goes on to ozanamod for the first time. There is a list of things to know, but it's not onerous, it's very doable, and the medication can be quite effective for your patient with ulcerative colitis.